Hello and welcome to this, the Sunday worship for Sunday the 13th of September, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, for this, the Congregation of Black Hall St Columbus. I welcome you if you're a member of the church or if you're a virtual member by dint of the fact you watch us online or if you're a visitor for the first time, welcome all. Uh, I have a few notices to give you about the life of the church, but please go online and look at our website and our social media sites to keep yourself up to date with everything that is happening. Uh, the publications of our Black Hall News and later on the Kirk News. Uh, the plans continue for our open day on Saturday the 17th of October. Uh, people will be allowed to view the refurbished sanctuary. Uh, we'll be constrained in all of our celebrations by the COVID regulations, but we're hoping as many people as possible will be able to take the opportunity to come and walk round the refurbished sanctuary and see the beautiful job that has been made uh, in renovating and refurbishing the church. I'm also happy to give you a birthday announcement this week. I'm told that Alan Hunter had a big birthday on Friday the 11th of September when he celebrated his 60th birthday. Many happy returns from myself and from all the congregation, Alan. I hope that Marjorie and yourself and all the family were able to celebrate in style. Uh, please remember to be in touch with me if you too would like to share any notices or announcements about the life of the congregation. Uh, and finally, remember to try to join us for our Zoom After Church Fellowship, which is after the normal time of our church service on Sunday, about 11.15, and you can access the Zoom links either on the website or on the email that has been sent out with all the links for this service. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. We come before God now, to bless and praise his holy name. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, as we gather in spirit for worship and fellowship, to refresh our souls and to sit a while at your feet, we ask you to be our unity this day. Hold us together as a community of your faithful followers. Feel the praise, love and faith we express in our worship and know the joy we have in coming to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, confessing that in our actions and reactions, we have failed you. In our loving and forgiving, we have fallen short of your mark. In our believing and trusting, we have denied your grace and power. In silence, we lay before you the specific sins which are clouding our relationship with you just now. You tell us if we confess our sins, you will forgive us and cleanse us. 
we thank you for that assurance. May we now live as those who know we are forgiven because of what Jesus has done for us in our lives. Almighty God, as you forgive us, guide us, we pray, in our commitment to forgive. Grant us the grace to forgive others, to forgive not only with our lips, but with our very hearts. Lord, help us also as we try to forgive ourselves. Give us your strength to allow us to move on in our lives from our transgressions, worries and regrets. Be with us as we try to live our lives for your glory and to work together for your kingdom here on earth. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shared with us your gospel message of forgiveness and gave his life that we might live. Amen. I'm now going to invite Shona to come and give us our scripture reading for today. Hello. Our Bible reading today is from Matthew chapter 18, reading from verses 21 to 35. As always, I'll be reading from the New Revised Edition. Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 21, which is entitled Forgiveness. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not even seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The parable of the unforgiving servant. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owned him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen. Thank you, Shona. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our passage today deals with a topic that, that is massive for all people, but is of particular significance to Christians. Forgiveness. There is so much to think about regarding this topic that it could, and indeed I'm sure it will, be the subject of many sermons. 
but in order that I'm still not speaking well after you're all wanting to have your lunch, I will focus today on the narrow aspect of the question asked, which is about quantity. The passage today begins with a question asked by Peter. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Now, now the immediate narrative context of Peter's question is contained in what we reflected on last week. Jesus' words and direction about confronting disagreements in the community. We reflected last week that we should guard against the process being the focus of our attention rather than the values of love underwriting it. In addition, we noted how easy it might be to manipulate Jesus' teachings here, to use Jesus' words to unfairly confront someone we disagree with. It is, as I said, important to use Jesus' words for the protection of the vulnerable without either inappropriately excusing or shaming another person. So here in today's passage, Peter asks about what limits we should place on our forgiveness for one another. Peter begins by offering what he clearly feels is a generous number, as many as seven times. Numbers in the Bible often have a wider significance. A number of people have speculated on whether or not Peter's use of the number seven has any special significance here. Within the Jewish culture, there is an understanding that people should be given up to three times if they ask it of you. After being given forgiveness three times, they have used up what are the limits of what could reasonably be expected by a normal person uh, to, to give. And there would be no expectation that someone should forgive further. Perhaps Peter thought by doubling this number and adding one for good measure, he would be on the right lines with Jesus. In scripture, uh, seven often symbolizes completion or perfection. Genesis tells us that God created the heavens and the earth in six days. And upon completion, God rested on the seventh day, which, as we know, is given over now to humankind for our own Sabbath and day of rest. The number seven is also linked with exoneration and healing. Deut Deuteronomy tells us that on every seventh year, the Israelites were to cancel the debts they had made with each other and free their slaves. In the context of healing, the prophet Elisha referenced the number seven when he directed Naaman the leper to bathe in the Jordan River seven times to be healed. Whatever the reason that Peter had for suggesting the number seven, we know now that Jesus dismisses it readily. Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Interestingly, Jesus' answer of 77 depends upon your biblical translation. Whilst the new revised standard version we heard from today, along with the new international version and many others, uses 77 as Jesus' answer. The King James translation says, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. This greatly increased number of seventy times seven is also used in other popular translations like the Good News Bible. The point is this. 
whether the number is 77 or 490. That is 70 times 7 if you hadn't quite worked it out. The point is the number doesn't matter. Peter's question is really about how long before our reservoir of grace can be exhausted. At what point do we say enough? It's as if, from Peter's point of view, we should keep a tally, a ledger, if you will, of how often we have forgiven some. But Jesus, when he says that we should forgive, not seven, but 77 times, is not suggesting merely a larger ledger upon which we can keep track of offences. He's not merely requiring an additional number of gracious acts. Instead, he is suggesting that there is no need for a ledger whatsoever. Forgiveness is a deep reservoir of grace that ought never to run dry. Why not? As is so often the case, Jesus explains by use of a parable. There is a servant who owes a great debt to the king, a debt so large that it could not be paid off in a lifetime. The servant pleads for mercy and out of pity, the king not only doesn't throw him in jail, but releases him from the whole debt. The now liberated servant leaves with a whole new life available to him. However, in short order, he shifts from servant to lord, from debtor to creditor. Encountering one of his fellow servants, he demands that a much smaller debt be repaid immediately. The forgiven servant, when he's unable to collect the debt owed to him, throws the other servant into prison. Once the king hears of his former servant's callous reaction, the king demands that the former servant who had been forgiven be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. Jesus concludes by noting the seriousness of our forgiveness of others. Just as the faithful hold the ability to bind and loose on earth, our unwillingness to forgive will rebound on us. Forgiveness is neither optional nor contingent. Why? Because God's forgiveness knows no end, knows no finite quality, quantity, and should therefore also, our relationships should be of a similar accord. Our relationships should be governed by a grace that knows no bounds and does not count transgressions in a ledger. Like last week's call to confront a disruptive person in the community, Jesus' teachings on forgiveness could be abused. Forgiveness does not mean the embrace of violence perpetrated against us. It does not mean giving free rein to those who would do us harm. It does not mean a ready acquiescence to those who are stronger than us. The context of these teachings is key. Forgiveness is a gift of grace, a reflection of God's love for each other and for every one of us. Confrontation without forgiveness does not reflect the good news of Jesus. But similarly, forgiveness that avoids the confrontations that made forgiveness necessary in the first place doesn't speak truthfully 
about reconciliation and healing that must go on. We have already received forgiveness from God in quantities that far exceed the 77 or even the 490. If we do not forgive the minor transgressions in light of what we have already received, then we are at risk of being convicted alongside the servant in the parable. We are called to a liberal forgiveness that reflects the forgiveness that God already offers to us through his Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you. But we ask, Lord, that you will bless our offerings and help us to use them wisely in your service and for your glory. Lord God, you are the strength of the weak the refuge of the distressed, the comforter of the sad, and the lover of our souls. In the name of Jesus, we come asking you to help all those in need, the homeless, the victims of violence, both domestic and global, those scarred by the wounds that life has inflicted upon them, the lonely, and the depressed. We bring them all to you in faith, trusting in your love and mercy. Lord, we turn our minds to the world and focus on those things in the news that concern us most. We pray for your creation. We hear that there is no sign of the catastrophic decline in wildlife populations throughout the world slowing down. Guide those who are trying to address these issues and grant your wisdom to those who are ignoring them. We pray about the wildfire situation in California, the unprecedented and deadly fires that burnt across the northwest of the United States. We ask you, su you sustain those who fight these and other fires. Comfort those who have lost property and give peace to those who mourn the loss of their loved ones. We pray for our own country, for the ongoing fight against the coronavirus, for those who are charged with making decisions about restrictions, for those who are engaged in the medical treatment of the disease and for those who are affected with the disease itself. Lord, let them all know and feel your presence at this time. We pray also for our country's economy, for those who are being affected by redundancy or loss of work, for those whose incomes have been affected by the economic downturn or reduction in investment dividends. We pray for those involved in the ongoing Brexit negotiations that they strive towards a deal that is equitable and fair for all involved. Lord, we pray for those known personally to us, for those we would have know your forgiveness, your love, your strength, your wisdom, your guidance, your comfort or your peace at this time.
We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to come together in praying, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we discover grace afresh, no matter what has happened in our lives. May the love of God, shown through Jesus Christ, give hope and strength. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.